What is up people of YouTube? I'm your host Vernon. This is Echo Bay. Let's fish that. Alright ladies and gentlemen, a very long time ago when North America was settled, uh, the people coming from Europe brought with them some common carp. Quite simple reason, these are fish that grow very big very quickly and you can feed an entire family with it. So it's a great way to find some food. And then of course when uh, the pioneers moved to the west, they also brought some of these fish with them. So we ended up with the entire continent of North America having some carp. These were of course invasive fish, but enough time has gone past that these fish are now naturalized. They are part of these bodies of waters. There's no way you can remove all the carp from Lake Mead. But today I specifically want to see if we can catch some carp and then we cook some carp as was the way it was intended a long time ago. All right, so I'm choosing this particular spot. Uh, we have some deep water out there. Uh, that is actually a place where if I was trying to find some stripers, I would target that. But I'm not doing that today. So I'm moving into this cove we have on this side. Knowing the habits of carp is important. It is summertime. They will be up in the shallows feeding. That's why I'm rather going to go into the coves, see if we can find some carp in these waters. Uh, for baits, I'm using some super cast feed. This is just a corn based mixture. Uh, this is what I grew up using, that's why I'm using this. But of course you can use any type of pack bait, uh, using some oats with jello, or maybe even using some polenta. Great way to make a feeding zone to draw in the fish. Um, carp fishing can get quite complicated, so I'm going to try and keep it simple. We're going to use a basic little feeder rig that has my corn pack bait on there. On my top hook I have a little marshmallow floaty with some corn and on the bottom hook I'm trying some night crawlers. I found over the last few months that these carp uh, tend to prefer night crawlers this year. Last year they only went for the corn but they seem to prefer night crawlers that's why I'm doing night crawlers as well. Uh, this is risky because that means some catfish and bluegill might also want to steal some of my baits. All right, so I got my baits out there soaking in the water. Now, of course, you can use all sorts of things like boilies, bread, any type of thing to catch carp. Uh, on my line, I have a little strike indicator thing, a little bobber on the line just to show me if something's happening to my baits, as well as a little alarm that will sound if some fish takes my bait. So now the only thing I can do is wait for some fish to show up. While we're waiting for that, I want to use this time to tell you guys about the competition, uh, the rules for entering in my competition. Uh, we're going to have a third, second and first place. Uh, up for grabs are some Amazon gift vouchers. And the person in first place will also uh, have an opportunity to do some fishing with me. All right, but to enter into the competition is actually quite simple. You just go down into the comments and you write a comment down there. Anything you write automatically gets you entered into the competition. If you say that you enjoyed the video or say that you hate the idea of the competition, whatever you write down there will enter you into the competition. Rather than me just trying to uh, pick random winners like I did last year, this year I'm going to ask you guys, the community, to help me out. I want you guys to go down into the comments, uh, write a comment, and then go like some comments. I want to reward the people that quite regularly watch my videos. So this competition is going to end on Monday. Uh, so it's a short time to write your comments and to go like the comments. On Monday evening, I'll take a screenshot of the top comments, the most liked comments, and that is how we are going to decide the winners. Now, please note that in order to win the first prize, you need to be in the Vegas Valley. I cannot unfortunately help you out if you're in Belgium. I cannot go fishing with you, but you can always still win an Amazon gift voucher as well. So thank you for entering and good luck.
Okay, so the fish on. Doesn't feel that big. Just wanna be sure that it can take line if need be. Also have a rock ledge here in front of me. Just wanna get the fish around that. Kind of weird way this fish is fighting. It's almost like it doesn't even know it's hooked yet. Kind of just cruising around. But I think we'll see if we get him a bit closer. Decent sized carp. golden colors on this one. I'm gonna try and get him around. Want him on this side so we can kind of block the wind a bit. But there we go, our target species for today. Lovely little common carp. It's a good size one as well. It's a good size one for eating as well. It's not that big. Sometimes if they're very big, it means they've been around for quite a while and can have lots of toxins and stuff that they get from the water in them. But this one should be fine. This one actually went for the corn. So let's quickly get the net to land him. There we go, fish landed in the net. Because we're not gonna release this guy, quickly gonna get a measurement on him. All right, so this is a 4.85 pound carp. That's a 2.2 kilogram carp. Decent sized carp, should make a pretty good meal. Now we've only been fishing for 40 minutes out here and then we got this little carp. That's the intended fish for today, but we're not gonna pack up yet. Still have a few lures and stuff I want to cast around, see if there's any other fish. But we did manage to get our carp, so we'll have catch and cook on our hands. All right guys, we just had a pull and then suddenly it went quiet and the rods bended. So I'm thinking maybe we got wrapped around some structure. Only way to find out is to see if we have anything on there. Felt something break loose. And indeed, we lost our little bottom hook. No big problem. We'll just put on a new one, cast out again. All right, ladies and gents, I had a pretty good time out there. Had a few more fish go for the corn, but didn't land any more carp. I also chased around some small boils, some stripers, chasing some of the little bait fish. But it is very quickly becoming quite hot out here, which brings me to a very important part in the video. You might have noticed that I took the little carp and I put it on my stringer. Now I did not bring my keep net out here with me, that's why I'm putting the fish on the stringer, putting him inside the water because I want this fish to stay alive as long as possible. 
because when it comes to carp, believe it or not, the dispatching of the fish is the most important part. In Japanese culture, there's a specific term uh, for killing the fish and letting all the blood and all the bad stuff out of it. That's because from the moment I hooked the fish, uh, the fish is producing adrenaline and it's the adrenaline in the blood that actually speeds up the process of decomposition. So if you kill the fish and it's still full of adrenaline, uh, that's when you get that real fishy taste out of the fish. So it's best, especially with carp, to try and get as much blood out of the fish as possible. You guys can see the fish is still alive and well and kicking. Now I cannot unfortunately show what I'm doing uh, on the internet, but what I'm basically doing is I'm going to cut the gill plates so that this fish bleeds out into the water, trying to get as much blood out of the fish before its heart stops beating. All right, so once I see that there's no more blood coming from the gills, I cut through the head into the spinal column, releasing more blood and killing the fish instantly. All right, ladies and gents, next step is going to be getting your fish on ice as quick as possible. This aids in the prevention of the decomposition of the fish, that also helps to not have the fish taste that fishy. And normally this will be the part where I hand over to my wife. She's a lot better with her knife skills than I am. But seeing as how we do have a fish cleaning station around, it's better to clean the fish here and just take the fillets home. We're only going to use the fillets. We don't need the skin and the head and stuff like that. So I'm quickly gonna fillet the fish, pack them away so we can take them home for cooking. All right guys, sorry for the bad lighting, but we finally have our fish all packed and ready to go. You'll notice it's very dark in color. That means even though I know I should have gotten more blood out of the fish, I wasn't able to do so. That's why the meat is red in color. It should be more white looking. So let's get to cooking. All right guys, we made it back home. Now we begin the process of cooking the catch. Uh, my idea was to do a carp curry uh, using some curry and some coconut milk uh, but it is pretty hot outside we're not in the mood for a curry tonight uh, so last minute change of plans uh, gonna hand you guys over to the wife and we're gonna do a Asian noodle dish but I'll let her walk you through it so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with putting a little marinade together and for that we're going to use some normal honey, we've got some rice vinegar, which is already seasoned in this case, but you can obviously use unseasoned rice vinegar. And um, we've also got some low sodium soy sauce. And we'll be adding a couple of aromatics, which include lemongrass, um, some lemon peel so we've got some lemon zest going in and then later on for the cooking process we'll add the actual lemon juice as well and then we've also got some fresh ginger here as well which we'll also be using um, so to start off with i'll make the little marinade quickly so for that we can add some soy sauce and of course nothing of this is an actual recipe but it's more cooking for ourselves and cooking with flavors that we know we like so we'll add some minced garlic to the soy sauce and the reason we're going to be marinating the the carp a bit is because the both of us actually find carp quite pungent and it's not necessarily a flavor that we really enjoy but we've had a ton of people ask us how to cook it so this is definitely a way that's like a light and fresh meal in the summer um, that makes the most out of the fish that you can so obviously if you're if you were eating this it would be mixing much easier but We'll be adding the fish to this and we want it to marinate in the fridge then for an hour to two hours. So in general, I prefer to then not actually eat the marinade as well. 
So the lemon has been washed and I've got a little zesting grater over here. So we'll just get some of the zest off so you basically don't want to add any of the white parts. So really try to stick to just the yellow zesty parts, the skin of the lemon. I'm not going to add a big chunk of ginger. I think this size is sufficient. And basically we're just removing the skin from the ginger and the easiest way to do that because of the irregular shape of it is actually to grab a teaspoon and just get the skin off of the ginger with that. So we're just cutting the edges off of the lemongrass and then we're basically just going to smash it with the back of our knives. So smash the lemongrass with the back of our knives. This basically just bruises it sufficiently to actually allow the flavor to infuse into your marinade. And what we're gonna do now is just remove any bones that were left in the fish after butchering it. So I've basically just got a tweezer that we used from like brand new, just a basic normal tweezer that we've dedicated to our fish when we're cooking any fish and that's what I'm using to pull out any of the pin bones or any of the bones that are actually still left in it but even on this tiny little piece you can actually see that there is a bone and on this side as well there is a bone there as well so we're just basically going to try our best to get as many of the bones out as possible so this is basically what we end up with and we're just going to mix this around so that all the pieces of fish is submerged and can actually marinate and we're going to leave this for about an hour to two hours depending on what time you have so i'm going to pop this in the fridge and we'll be back in an hour or so so what we've got currently going on here is we've added some of the dried noodles like rice noodles really thin rice noodles to a bowl and i've added some boiling hot water to that to soften up so long we've got some of the marinade with the lemongrass go going in the pot at the moment here's our marinated fish and i've prepared some veggies over here so we have grated ginger um, some scallions or green onions or spring onions whatever you want to call it the bottom pots quite roughly chopped because that's going to go into the pot together with the carrots which are about this size and the tops that are going to go in right at the end and over here we have some sugar snaps or sh snap peas and um, you can obviously use snow peas or mange too as well um, but I just prefer the crunch of these and to this I'm going to add the ginger and it in terms of the amount of ginger it was probably about the size of maybe like that part of my forefinger um, that I just grated finely you can fish out the lemongrass and at this moment I'm going to add the fish and the rest of the marinade to the pot so after about three or four minutes um, we're going to some of our veggies and we're adding all of the carrots and the bottom halves of our green onions Oops. we're just going to move that around a bit be careful to not completely break up your fish pieces and at this point we're going to add a bit more um, of the fluids for our sauce so because we added the lemon to the pot um, we're now adding additional low sodium soy sauce 
Of course, you could just use normal soy sauce as well if you want. A dash of the rice vinegar. And we're probably going to need some of the honey again. And after about seven or eight minutes, the fish should be fully cooked and your carrots are a bit longer than the sugar snaps. So we're adding the sugar snaps right now and some of those tops of the green onions. Give that a stir through just to get some heat on them. But we definitely don't want it to overcook. And at this point, we can actually start adding the noodles on top. And now we'll just give it a bit of a toss by kind of turning it over and mixing everything in. And there we have it. An Asian-inspired carp noodle dish. And of course, as I said, there's a lot of bones in this fish. So just make sure that you're careful when you're actually eating it to make sure that you remove any of the bones. All right, guys, we tend to naturally not want to eat any carp. But doing the right recipe, you can feed an entire family with just one fish. You can get quite a lot of meat out of these guys. And they're fairly easy to catch. Now, if you enjoyed this video or learned anything from it, please do give me a little thumbs up. Feel free to share this with anyone you think needs to know about cooking some carp. And if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button, join my community and see what other videos I have out there. Feel free to ask any questions down in the comments. Just note that asking questions this time around is going to get you entered into the competition. Also go down there and uh, like the comments to vote for your favorites. All right guys, but thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.